Well, cool. Well, welcome. Uh, online friends, welcome. Um, just come up to standing when you're ready. And if you practice with your feet uh, on parallel, awesome. Or if you like to bring your big toes together and some space between your heels, that works too. Either way, though, I want you to close your eyes, relax your arms, and then just take an inhale to lift your shoulder heads high up towards your ears. And on your exhale, roll your shoulders down away from the ears and the back. And then take a moment, lift your toes up off the ground, maybe wiggle through your toes a little bit. Maybe you roll out your wrists and move your fingers. And then when you bring your toes back into the ground, just feeling spread out into all corners of your feet. Checking in that your knees aren't locked. There's a little bit of softness there. And then that length is all the way up through the spine, all the way through the back of the neck. Beautiful. Just take your air and release. Bring it all the way down to empty. <sighs> Breathe in low belly, low back. Hold there. Take your air into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back. Hold there. Fill all the way into your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you've got the full breath, just relax. And then exhale like you're quieting a child. So, shh. Take that ujjayi inhale. So through the nose, sipping the air in through a straw from the bottom to the middle, all the way up to the top. And then your ujjayi exhale back out your nose like you're fogging up a mirror using those muscles in the back of the throat just to control the release nice and slow all the way down to empty. So ujjayi breathing, the breath of victory, right? In and out through your nose. It's a diaphragm breath, so it's a full belly breath from the bottom. You're coming all the way up to the top. And then when you use those muscles in the back of the throat, we want to create that sound of ocean waves, that sound of hollow wind that we get to pay attention to. And by controlling the breath, we create a mindful link between mind and body. And as we go through the session, we keep that link inside of these poses when we start to do more of a flow inside of the flow. So take what works for me, leave the rest behind, and just let your breath be your guide. Eyes blink open to a soft gaze up front. And on your inhale, just stretch and reach your arms up nice and tall into mountain. And on your exhale, bring your left hand down into your hip. Shift your hips over to the right and just reach and stretch through your right arm for a couple rounds of breath. You could twist your shoulders or your hips here. You could twist where your gaze is going. And then you can take an inhale just to reach back up tall in space, maybe a slight arc back. And on the exhale, just bring your right hand into your hip. Shift your hips out over to the left. Reach and extend up tall through that left arm. Again, just a couple rounds of breath into this side body. And same thing where if you want to do any twisting through your shoulders or through your hips or through your gaze here, you can find some different angles. Beautiful. Inhale to reach your arms up nice and tall in space. Breathe in. And on your exhale, just hinge out from your hips and take your swan dive down into your forward fold. Release your head at the bottom. Inhale halfway up, so a little bend in the knees. Press to your shins or thighs. Parallel the spine to the ground. Tone your shoulders in. Lengthen the back of the neck. On the exhale, take that fold back down. And then just relaxing the fingertips to the earth, bending the knees as much as you need to. Take a slow nod, yes, through the head. Keep that breathing going. Slow side to side, nod, no. And then we'll just take a little tuck and curl here so you can lift your heels up off the ground, balls of the feet are to the earth. And then you can leave your fingertips to the ground. You're dropping your sit bones back towards your heel. So that's the kind of tucking and curling part right here. And we're really just getting a nice stretch in that low back. If you want to balance, you might wrap your arms around your shins, bringing your hands in towards one another while you're on the balls of your feet here.
And then on an inhale, we'll come halfway up, so planting the heels, again, extending through the spine, toning through the shoulders. On that exhale, refold. And take your left fingertips, fist, or palm to the center. Start to bend into your left knee, and then stretch and extend your right arm up tall in space. Gaze over to the right, and you're lengthening your right leg, pushing down into your heel, pushing down into the foot. Awesome, friends, and use that breathing. Use those inhales. Use those exhales. And then when your exhale comes, just let your right fingers uh, or fist or palm replace the left. Bend into the right knee. Reach and extend your left arm up nice and tall in space. Lengthen down into the left leg, so push down into the heel. Push down through the corners of the foot and just feel that stretch along the outside and the back of the leg. Gaze over to the left. Open and twist through the back. Stay with your breathing. Left palm is high-fiving that left wall. Awesome. Next exhale, just refold. And then we'll take a slow vertebrae by vertebrae. Roll to standing where your head is the very last thing that comes up. Then when your head does come up, just inhaling to reach your arms wide and stretch up tall. And on your exhale, just a baby, baby back bend. So tone the shoulders in. Slight bend through the knees. Tone through the core. Lift up through the chest. Inhale to reach back up into your mountain. And on your exhale, hinge out from your hips and swan dive down into your forward fold. Inhale brings us halfway up. Lengthen and stretch through the spine. And on that exhale, we're going to refold. We're going to do that kind of tuck and curl. But this time, while we do our tuck and curl, we're also going to warm up the back of our wrists. So all I'm doing is a squat here. If you have your heels connected, that's fantastic. Otherwise, your heels can remain lifted. And then I'm going to start to plant the palms down and leave a, lean a little bit forward in space. Now, if this is not accessible for you from a squat position, you could also just step back and find a tabletop. That will work as well. And then one of my favorite things to do when we stretch out the wrist is to take a lean back, back to your fingers. So you kind of pull the hands off the mat to your fingers and then roll back forward. And what I love about that is I need to stretch out the circle of my palm before I do a uh, down dog or before I go into a plank position. And this one really helps with that. If you want to, it, you could switch at some point and take the back of your hands down to the ground. Your fingers could face one another or your fingers could face to the back of your mat. You might just give a little side to side or a little back and forth massage. And then the whole time we're going through this, you're just staying with that breathing, friends. And then taking it fully into a squat, maybe at this point you do drop your heels down to the ground. Just take a roll out through your wrists. Beautiful. Take your step back into your plank position when you're ready. You might add a little bit of back and forth movement to begin with here as you start to feel, in, feel into what is holding you up. Tone the biceps in and put a micro bend into them. Stay on your toes. You could also lower your knees and cross your ankles. Feel that tone through your core. And on an exhale, come halfway down, leading with your sternum to Chaturanga Dandasana. And then with your inhale, come back up. And whether you're on your, t your toes or your knees, avoid bending the hips. Take that a couple times at your own, play, at your own pace. And then we'll take that complete lower down to the ground and start to set up our low cobra, our bhujangasana. So tops of the feet are rooted. Hips are comfortable to the ground. Your palms slide a little lower down the torso, framing mid ribs. Elbows squeeze in towards one another, toning your shoulder blades. And then you're just lifting your chest up off of the ground with length through the back of the neck. And really there's little to no weight in the hands right here. So the lift from your chest is not from your arms pressing down. It's from those snake muscles around you, the, around your spine, those core muscles, those back muscles. Beautiful breathing. One more inhale, lifts it up. And on the exhale, you can lower down. And to come to down dog, you can move through tabletop or a, a reverse plank. 
Letting the hip shift back and up in space. Maybe taking a little walk through your down dog. Stretching out through one leg at a time while the opposite knee bends. You're just reaching the heel down towards the ground. Consciously spread out into the circle of the palm, into your fingers, the tips, the knuckles. Relax the weight of the head so it looks back behind you. Micro bend the elbows, biceps toned to, to center line, and then hips lifting up back and tall. We'll take the right leg back up to a three-legged down dog from here, so diagonal line. Watch if you're sinking into your left hip. We can lift up and back with that left hip to help extend your right leg up and back in space. You're pressing through your heel, maybe through the ball of your foot. Awesome, and finding that breath, keeping that shape in your arms that spread into your hands. Let's take one more inhale to lift it up. And on your exhale, just step up into your low lunge position, working your right foot up in between your hands, rooting into the ball of your left foot. And then leave your left fingertips, your fist, or your palm down underneath your left shoulder and start to twist and extend your right arm up tall in space. And off the bat, I want you to start to tone your legs here. So I want you to feel your thighs coming in towards one another nice and strong to the point where now work up just to the five fingertips on your left hand, continuing to reach that right arm up tall. If you want, you can move up to just the middle fingertip on that left hand. And if you want to go even further than that, you can hover the left hand just off the ground, keeping that shape in your back. Beautiful friends, stay with your breath. On your next exhale, we're going to tilt this upright so we end up in a vertical twisting lunge. So right arm is behind us, left arm is forward. Back knee can hover a little bit off of the ground. Spine is straight up in space. Thighs are toned in towards one another. Nice breathing. Feel rooted into that right foot, strong around that right knee. On an inhale, lift up high crescent lunge. Just bring your arms up nice and tall in space. You can think about those pinkies are coming forward, thumbs are pointing back, so that the insides of the biceps can turn into face one another. Your shoulder heads can relax down on your back, and we get that opening through the chest while we're here, and the shoulder heads, again, down away from your ears on your back. And just finding your inhales, finding your exhales. Take beggar's bowl when you are ready. This is a turbo lunge where your back knee just hovers off the ground and you extend your arms forward in space and you're strong up through your spine. Those thighs pulling back in towards one another. Pretend there's some weight to the bowl that you're lifting. So if you were doing that, you'd have to get that arm strength and you'd have to get also that upper shoulder strength back behind you. And I know we're building the heat up in the legs here, so find your breath around it. And then warrior two when you're ready. So knife edge of the left foot to the ground. Left arm reaches back. Right arm is coming forward in space. Nice long stance from the front of your mat to your back. Spine up nice and tall. Thighs are toned in. That right sit bone underneath your body. Shoulder heads released down. And just gazing out over the front fingertips, staying with your breathing. On an exhale, find the extended side angle pose. Right forearm to your right thigh for today with left arm straight up in space. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a variation here where you just are gonna lift your right elbow so it's hovering from your right thigh. But keep that shape in your legs and keep that shape in your upper arm. You can keep hovering if you want or you can return the right arm down to, to press into the right thigh. But just noting the strength that we keep in the back and the strength that we keep in the side body here. So we don't want to sink forward into our right arm. We're not resting into it. On an inhale, rise up into your warrior two. Straighten out your right leg. This is Trikonasana triangle pose. You can take your hinge forward. 
and then take the fingertips down. Maybe you've got a block on the outside of the right ankle you're going to. Maybe your fingertips are down to the ankle itself. Maybe you're connecting down to the ground. Either one of those is going to work just fine here. So you press into your right foot, feel your, feel your hips drawing back in space, and then open your wingspan up. The spine is a crossbar here. Crown of the head reaching forward, gazes to the left. If that right knee is locked, think about a micro bend in your right knee, so we're just engaging the muscles around as we're stretching the back of it. Awesome, friends. Inhale brings us back up into our warrior two, and then reverse your warrior on your exhale. So left hand to hip, thigh, or behind you. Right arm up tall in space. Gaze can come up to the sky. You can add that bend to your elbow if you want, so right hand is reaching back behind. Take one more breath into your reverse warrior, and when your exhale comes, just cartwheel your hands down to frame your right foot. Turn onto the ball of the left foot, and we'll step back into a plank position. So for teeter-totter, we can take the left leg back and the right arm forward, and you can do this from your plank. If you want to do it from tabletop, that right knee just comes down to the ground underneath your right hip, but then you're doing the same thing, left leg reaching back, right arm reaching forward. So either teeter-totter from tabletop, or teeter-totter from plank. And the word teeter-totter is built into it just to make a game out of it. So if you find yourself falling, that's part of it, right? That's part of the point. Okay, find your full plank when you're ready. This is actually your turn for how you want to take your vinyasa, how you want to take your flow. So you could choose to go directly from plank to down dog, or you might come halfway to chaturanga. It might be an upward-facing dog like I'm doing. Could be a low cobra too. And then eventually we meet back in down dog. Take a couple rounds of breath in down dog, friends. Find those alignment points. And then left leg this time is going to lift back and up in space. Three-legged down dog. Push through your heel or through the ball of the foot. You can watch if you start to sink down into that right hip. Again, think about that right hip is strong and active. So it's kind of lifting up back into space to help extend your left leg. Strong through your arms. It looks fantastic. Staying with that breathing. Let's take one more in-breath. And then on the out-breath, we're working up to our low lunge position. Once you've got your foot up in between your hands, right hand is underneath your shoulder, on the fist, on the palm, on the fingertips, and then left arm is reaching up, so taking that twisting uh, low lunge position. Find your inhales, find your exhales. Start to work to the five fingertips on the right hand, starting to bring more strength into your legs. Maybe the middle fingertip of the right hand, maybe hovering the right hand up off the ground. And then eventually on an exhale, you tilt upright. You're in a vertical twisting lunge with right arm forward, left arm back. Your back knee could hover a little further up off the ground or could hover closer down towards the ground. Thighs are toned in towards one another nice and strong. Stay with that breathing. Get down to the end of the breath. And then on your inhale, just bring your arms forward and up and find a high crescent lunge. And then think about opening up through the chest here. So again, lining those, those arms up so shoulder heads can release down away from the ears on the back. And then we're just leading forward with the heart in this one, nice and strong through the legs, feeling that tone on the thighs and towards one another. And then we'll turn it up the heat a little bit more in the legs. So now we go to that beggar's bowl. Your back knee hovers off the ground, and then you extend your arms forward. You find that lift of your bowl up in space. We're not sinking down into the, the joints here. We're strong, engage the muscles around the joints inside of the pose. And 
then you got your warrior two. So knife edge of your right foot to the ground, right arm back, left arm forward. You can lengthen your stance out if you want. And then with that back leg, just feeling into the knife edge of it and feeling the press down into it so you feel the engagement of your entire right leg pressing down into the ground, lifting back up away from it. And just placing your gaze out across the fingertips. On an exhale, find your extended side angle pose. Rooting your left forearm today onto your left thigh. Lifting your right arm straight up in space, opening back through that right shoulder. And then the variation, lift your left elbow so it's hovering off of your left thigh. So you're keeping the exact shape you were in. And you can keep hovering if you want, or you can bring the elbow back. But just, again, the, the, the point of that is just to feel more of those back, those side body muscles that are helping to keep the spine in that position that we're asking of it. Your inhales to your warrior two, you can lengthen out the left leg in preparation for triangle. And as you exhale, you'll hinge forward as far as you can and then connect those fingertips down to the ground. Maybe it's your block on the outside of the ankle, maybe to the earth on the inside or outside of the foot. And again, feeling that full lift up here through the right arm, the full wingspan of your arms. Shoulders stacked, crown of the head forward, gazes to the side. Right on. Inhale back up to your warrior two, and then reverse warrior on your exhale, taking your right hand to hip thigh or behind you, lifting up tall through that left arm, relaxing the right shoulder away from your right ear, staying in your lunge and feeling that lift through your left side body. One more inhale on this, and then when the exhale comes, just cartwheel your hands down to frame your left foot, low lunge position onto the ball of your right. Step your left foot back to meet your right to a plank, and then teeter-totter from plank. This time your right leg is back, left arm is forward, or teeter-totter from tabletop, left knee down to the ground below your left hip. Right leg is back, left arm is forward. Find the last full round of breath playing with this. And then your time for your vinyasa, for your flow. So maybe you're directly to down dog. Maybe you're taking it halfway down, up dog or a low cobra, and then eventually taking it back into our down dog. Beautiful friends, find a couple rounds of breath here. And then we'll take that sequence breath to movement. Just have fun with this, do your best with it. If you fall behind me or get in front of me, no worries. Or if you need to modify, no worries. And then we, we will skip that teeter-totter section. So from here on an inhale, you'll lift your right leg back up, three-legged down dog. And then with the exhale, step up to a low lunge position. Left hand stays rooted underneath you. Inhale to reach your right arm up, twisting low lunge. And as you exhale, just tilt upright into a vertical twisting lunge, back knee can hover. Your inhale is to a high crescent lunge, both arms up. And as you exhale, find that beggar's bowl, back knee hovers, arms reach forward. Inhale, it's to your warrior two, so left arm back, right arm forward. And then on your exhale, extended side angle pose. Inhale, warrior two, but lengthen out your right leg. And on your exhale, tilt down into Trikonasana Triangle. Inhale brings you to reverse your warrior, sweeping back and up through the right arm. And on your exhale, we come down into a low lunge position. The inhale is plank, and then the rest is up to you. You could exhale down dog, you can take Chaturanga, up dog, low cobra, meeting back in that downward facing dog. 
Right on, let's grab that on the left side. So when you're ready, inhale, reaches your left leg up tall in space. And as you exhale, just step up into your low lunge position. Right hand under your shoulder, inhale, left arm up nice and tall. And on your exhale, tilt upright into vertical twisting lunge. Inhale is your high crescent, so both arms up, chest is forward. Exhale to our beggar's bowl. Inhale to your warrior two, right arm back, left arm forward. And on your exhale, take your extended side angle pose. Inhale to warrior two, lengthen out your left leg. And on your exhale, tilt into triangle, keeping that micro bend in your knee. On your inhale, reverse your warrior. And on the exhale, cartwheel down into your low lunge position. Inhale as plank, and then you take your flow from there. Beautiful, friends. On the next exhale from your down dog, bring it to tabletop. Take your knees out wide, tops of the feet to the ground, big toes together, sit bones back to your heels, and forehead to the earth for our child pose. Maybe you're exploring this child's pose in stillness, just letting the weight of the body relax into the posture. Maybe you're getting a little more active, you're pressing forward into your fingertips, pushing your sit bones closer back towards your heels. Get down to the end of the exhale that you're on. And then when your inhale comes in, you can lift up into your tabletop, drop one of your hips to the ground, bring your legs forward, and then grab your hamstrings, take the weight down onto your back, but keep your head lifted so your legs are straight up in space and your head is not tapped down, shoulders are not tapped down. Reach your arms forward, and we're gonna go right into our force first core move. So you can begin the movement when you're ready. This is a side to side with your legs up where you're reaching forward through left arm and then reaching forward through right arm. If your neck needs support, take one hand behind the base of your skull and use your breathing. When you're doing core work, if that ujjayi breath stops working for you, you can take a regular breath in and out through your mouth or whatever you need to, just keep the breath moving. Okay, we're gonna hold both arms straight up Again, one hand might be behind the base of your skull, supporting the neck here. Feel that flexion through your abdominal wall. Back to the side to side movement. We're just gonna do it for a little bit longer and then we're gonna take a rest here. Perfect, friends. So when you're ready, Supta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle pose. Bottoms of the feet together. Knife edge of the feet are to the ground. Knees are wide. Relax your head and your arms where it feels comfortable to you and find your breath. And that's <clears throat> back on that mindful connection we were talking about, that mindfulness link between mind and body. If we can follow the journey of the inhale and we can follow the journey of the exhale. Bend your knees at 90 degrees so the knees are above your hips and the bottoms of the feet are pointing forward. Interlace your hands behind the base of your skull so the head and shoulders are off the ground, and then start to extend your legs out to a diagonal. 
Keep your low back rooted to the ground versus your low back arching. And then your movement, friends, inhale to bring your knees in. And as you exhale, reach your legs straight up and lower back to the diagonal. And that's the circle. In, up, and down with your breath. Okay, hold your legs out on that diagonal the next time they come out. Again, they don't need to be super low. You don't want to get to the point where you're getting that arch. Just nice and up, staying with your inhales, staying with your exhales. Start into the movement again, in, up, and down. Again, we'll take it just for a little bit longer, and then we'll take a rest. Nice. Bring your feet to the ground. Uh, knees are up in space. Walk your feet out a little bit wider. Open the arms up in a T from your chest. And then we'll windshield wiper the knees. So you can let the knees come down to the left, onto the outside edge of the left foot, inside edge of the right. Your gaze gets turned to the right. And on your inhale, you can come back up to center. And on your exhale, you can switch that out. And just taking this at your own pace, just windshield wipering through those knees. Nice. Balance your sides out. And you come back up to center. And we'll make our way up to a seat. And if you want to rock and roll up to your seat, you're welcome to. You can grab your hamstrings and you can rock your way up. You could do that a couple times if you want to. Leave your heels planted to the floor with your toes reaching up. The knees are bent. And then grab onto your hamstrings. And start to lengthen your spine up in space and tone your shoulder blades in. And then as we move into Navasana, we'll lift the feet up off the ground, our boat pose, cross the ankles, and then we'll start to row our boat. So the movement is twisting to the left and to the right. And we've had um, some nice uh, twists in class so far where you're opening your chest to one wall as your back opens to the opposite wall. And that's part of what we're doing here, just being really aware of our breath and then just aware of that shape in our spine. So we'll hold our Navasana boat pose. You can uncross your ankles. You can leave the knees bent or lengthen the legs. Tone your shoulders in. Hands are away from the legs or they're grabbing out of the back of the hamstrings and doing that lift, that pull. Relax your face. And then cross your ankles and just take a couple more rows to the sides. When you're ready, friends, let's bring it forward to tabletop and then start to work uh, cat and cow at your own pace from your tabletop. And cow is that dropping of the belly as you tilt the hips and the chest up. And cat is dropping the tailbone, the head, mid-back lifting high in space. Add any rocking back and forth or side to side inside of those two shapes. Nice, friend. Just give it a couple more rounds of breath. And then we'll come into dolphin pose from our tabletop. And the first thing is just setting our arms up. So you can drop those elbows down to the ground and let opposite hand grab the opposite uh, uh, bicep. That will set your elbows up at shoulder's distance. From there, you can swing your arms back out, root into the bellies of the forearms and your palms. You might, from there, just step back to a forearm plank position to start with. 
feeling that strength in your, your core. And then start to walk your elbows, uh, your toes rather, up towards your elbows. And we're kind of creating that same shape like down dog. You want to watch that you're not leaning forward. You're lifting your sternum back and up towards your thighs. And your shoulders are helping to press back and up. Feel free to take the right leg up if you want to do a three-legged dolphin here. On an exhale, you can bring it down. We can take the left leg up. Exhale, release it down. Find those last couple rounds. Relax the weight of the head. Nice, and then come back into your forearm plank position. Toes to the back of your mat. Gaze is down. And then let the hips tap down to the floor, and we're in Sphinx pose. Rooting and pressing into the elbows, lifting through the chest, finding length through the back of the neck. If you'd like, just twist your gaze across your right shoulder. And if your gaze is over the right shoulder, balance the sides out, take your gaze across your left. And the weight of the head can release down as you lift through the shoulders, kind of like you're doing cat with your upper back. And then finally, like you're laying out at the beach, just release the hips down, or the, the head and arms down, rather. You can place your chin or your forehead on top of your hands or on top of the ground. You might keep your feet heavy to the floor, or you might pick your feet up in space and start to do some windshield wiper circles with your ankles and your knees. Cool, and then we can take this into locust pose. This is gonna be spine strengthening. So locust is just very similar to that low cobra, but then you lift your thighs up off the ground, and then you reach your arms back, elbows lift a little bit, bent, and then the shoulder blades toned in, length through the back of the neck. Or if you wanna do Danyarasana, bow posture, you bring the heels to the sit bones, hands to the tops of the feet, and then find that bind, that balance between kicking and pulling. Thighs up off the ground, knees toned in at about hip bone distance. Watching that we're not straining too much through the neck. We've got the length through the back of it. Finding your breath. And when you're ready, friends, release down, palms under the shoulders, tuck your toes, inhale to down dog through tabletop or plank. Inhale extends the right leg back up tall in space, three-legged down dog. And then open the hip and bend the knee to a scorpion tail on the exhale. Watch that you're not dipping and bending deep into your left elbow or shoulder so you're strong through it, and that your left heel is not swiveling to the side, it's pointing back behind us. On an exhale now, step your right foot up in between your hands, low lunge. And then walk your right foot over to the right side of your mat. This is going to be our runner's lunge. Back left knee is lifted, or you can drop your back left knee down to the ground. And then you keep yourself on your hands if you're already feeling that stretch on the inside of your right hip, or start to bring your elbows down to a blanket, block, or to the floor. And obviously it's easier for that left elbow to tap down but the stretch is when your right elbow is the one that gets closer down to the ground. 
Watch that we're not letting the hips sink or fall here. We are placing the hips into this pose, into this big stretch. And you could also, if you want, have your toes just point a little bit out to the right so that you're opening the inside of your right foot to face slightly forward. And we can relax the neck out here so you don't need to be feel like you're straining your neck. Find that breath. Nice, friends. Low lunge position. Gaze comes slightly up in space. And then just step that left foot up to meet your right. Find our Utkatasana, our chair pose, lowering through your sit bones. If you take your, your big toes together, then have the ankle bone, knees, and thighs all in. If things are at hip bone distance, avoid your knees bowing in or caving or bowing out or caving in. So keep everything lined up at hip bone. Feel those sit bones drawing back. And then that tone we've got around the knees here. The draw of the glutes back up away from the knees. The rooting into the feet. You have to take flying chair. I love this one. Lift the heels. Reach the arms back. Elbows bend a little bit. Chest is still lifting up in front of us. And then for one-legged mountain, right foot is your base. Draw your arms and your left knee up tall in space. And from that one-legged mountain, a figure four, where your left ankle goes over the top of your right knee or thigh. Sit bones drop back in space. Hands can be at your heart center, or you can have one hand onto the knee and one hand onto the heel. Flexion of your toes back in towards your shin so your heel points out. And then you're opening your hip down and out here. Finding that breath. Nice, guys. So just rise back up into your one-legged mountain when you're ready. You can extend the left leg forward if you like without leaning back. So think about pressing down into the ball of your right foot. Lifting up through that left thigh, plugging back into center. And then swim back into your low lunge position. And we'll work into uh, pigeon, walking, walking now the right foot over the left side of your mat, and then dropping the right knee over to your right. You could also do reclined pigeon on the back. Left, top of the left foot to the ground, you can slide your left leg directly back behind you a little bit. You can have the side of the right foot or the top of the right foot to the floor. And then rooting into your fingertips, just lift up nice and tall. And when you're ready, you can bring it down to the forearms. You can release the weight of the head down. Nice, friends. And just checking in that you're not letting your, your hips uh, sink over to the left or your hips sink over to the right. And one way I always like to check that is that you've got the front of your left thigh pointing straight down to the ground. And then your right sit bone is drawing a little bit back into the right. And then just take this to a three-legged down dog when you're ready. So tucking those left toes, lifting your right leg back and up in space. You can open the hip and bend the knee or pump out through the hip as you like. 
and then we're meeting in that full downward facing dog. And on an inhale, drawing the left leg back and up to a three-legged down dog. And then open the hip and bend the knee. So drape the toes down over to the right down as your knee lifts up nice and tall. Scorpion tail with that left leg. And again, watch that you're not sinking into your right shoulder. Bending super deep into your right elbow, that your right heel is pointing back. Beautiful. That looks great. And then on your exhale, friends, let's take that scorpion tail. You'll step up to a low lunge position. Walk your left foot over to the left side of your mat. Your right foot could go a little bit back into the right. And then as you come into runner's lunge, back knee stays lifted or touches to the ground. You're on the hands or you're working those elbows to the floor or to some type of prop. And again, thinking about that that left elbow is the one that's more of the focus here. And watch, your hips can twist and dip and get into all kind of, you know, interesting shapes inside a runner's lunge. We really want to think about squaring the hips towards the ground and then about squaring the hips towards the front of the room and guiding the hips into this placement as we explore the deeper parts of the stretch. Finding those inhales, finding those exhales. Nice, friends. Find your low lunge. And from there, right foot meets the left. Step up into your chair. Let those sit bones reach back in space. Lift up through your arms. Feel those shoulder blades toning back behind you. Strengthen around your knees. Glutes pulling up and away from the knees. On an exhale, find your flying chair. So just lift your heels, reach your arms back, bend up through those elbows, shine your heart up, stay playful with your balance. Okay, then more balance. Take the weight out to your left foot, draw your arms and your right knee up into one legged mountain. And then take your figure four, so cross that right ankle over your left thigh. Drop your sit bones back in space. Again, hands could be at your heart center. You could also have one hand to knee and one hand to heel. Some flexion of your right toes back to your shin, right knee gently flexing down. Excellent, rise back up one-legged mountain. And this time you have the option to extend your right leg forward in space. Lift up through that thigh, press down into the ball of the left foot, you got it. And then you're gonna swim all the way back into your low lunge position from here. And then we've got our pigeon, walking the left foot over to that right side of your mat, dropping the left knee to the left, top of the foot or the side of the foot to the ground, top the right foot to the floor directly behind you, and then taking it and releasing it down when you're ready to your humble pigeon. And just checking at the top of that right thigh is pointing down towards the ground. Maybe your left sit bone is pulling a little down and back. Beautiful breathing.
And then we're back into that three-legged down dog, tucking your right toes, bringing your left leg back and up, giving some movement to it. Our last downward facing dog. And on the exhale, just bringing it down to your tabletop. Take one of your hips down to the ground and bring your legs forward. Slide your feet up all the way to the top of your mat. And then walk your sit bones back a step or two. Knees are slightly bent. Inhale your arms up. And on your exhale, just hinge forward and connect down to your toes or to the shins or to the mat. On an inhale, lift your chest up in space. Your gaze is forward. You're pulling against the mat, ankles, or the feet. And on your exhale, refold. And now if you want, you can add or subtract that bend in your knees by walking sit bones uh, back or forwards. And just find a balanced level of sensation to work with here. So not too much, not too little. One where you've got plenty of room for that breath. Nice. Inhale to reach your arms back up nice and tall. Breathe in. And on your exhale, you can take the hands through your heart center down to the earth at your sides. Slide your hips up, and we'll already prepare our bridge pose from here, planting our feet to the ground at hip bone distance, extending arms forward, vertebrae above vertebrae, lowering down into the ground. And then we want to get the head relax and once the head relaxes you can step your heels in closer towards you until your fingers can touch your heels and then press down into your elbows so you bend the elbows at 90 your hands are reaching up and then as you lift up the hips I want you to bring those uh, those shoulder blades in a little bit closer towards one another so you're making a shelf for your heart here as you press down and then you get into all corners of your feet as you draw up through the hips here and then if your gaze comes up towards your belly, you can really see the rise and fall of the breath here as you work that diaphragm breathing. A couple more rounds of breath on it. You're doing great. Next exhale, just vertebrae by vertebrae. Let that one roll down into the ground for happy baby. Taking the peace sign fingers up to your big toes or the hands to the edges of your feet. And then pulling down on your happy baby frame, getting the low back to root down into the ground or come close to the ground and maybe sway a little side to side. Knees are wide, ankles are stacked above the knees, bottoms of the feet are shining up to sky. And then we'll stack our knees over to the left onto the outside edge of the left hip. Your thighs are parallel to the ends of your mat. Reach and extend your right arm out to the right and take your gaze out across your right fingertips. Left hand can gently pull down on the top and outside of that left knee and thigh.
nice breathing. And switch your sides out. Getting the knees out to the right, left arm out to the left. Left shoulder gently releasing down towards the earth or pulling closer towards it. And then just hug your knees into your chest and give yourself a little rock on your back, massaging out the hips, sacrum, low back. And then we can get ourselves into our final resting pose, our corpse posture, our shavasana. If you've got something you're covering your eyes with, awesome, or something to cover your body with, just let the weight of the feet relax open. Release your arms down at your sides, palms up to the sky. Make sure your shoulder blades are comfortably resting down behind you. The weight of the head is just released. The eyes can close. And then let go of controlling your breath and just allow your body to take back over on the breathing. Nice and slow, bring some life back to your body. Rolling out ankles and wrists, moving through your fingers and through your toes. Maybe a full morning stretch from the front of the room to the back. 
And then roll the weight of your body onto your side into a fetal position. Curl up and just find a deeper breath. We'll come up to a very intentional seated position. So just crossing your legs so that feel as comfortable. But then positioning the weight of your body to the front edge of the sit bones, pulling the flesh away or maybe walking back to find the front edge of the sit bones. From there, you can take your hands to your knees and inhale to reach your shoulders up high towards your ears. And on the exhale, just roll your shoulders down away from the ears on the back. Relax your hands where it feels comfortable. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether it is clear to you or not, no doubt the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. Thank you so much for coming out and doing your work on your mat, just tapping into that mindfulness space. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love. Namaste.